inland sea here which has over 300 islands but you see this island has a particular position because it's right in the entrance to this inland sea uh, and there's a river comes down came down there and it's now underwater river another one comes down here and those two currents meet just in front of this island just here. Uh, which makes, as the man said, this makes this the strongest water current. Second strong, although it's 5,000 years old, uh, 5,500 years old, there, there has been no water infiltration along the engravings. It drains. That's winter solstice sunrise, and the main axis is the major moon standstill. <laughs> okay, so the width of the of the alley uh, has been determined in function of the difference between the winter solstice sunrise and the moon. And the junction point of those two lines is approximately in the middle of the the corridor, and at that point there is a quartz stone. All the rest mm. of the stone is gravid, uh, uh, granite and engraved, and at that particular point, there's one quartz stone. But the sunrise takes place at exactly the same time here on the 1st of May as at Newgrange. So that somebody who's here on the 1st of May at sunrise will be watching exactly the sunrise at exactly the same time that someone in Newgrange. That's 40 days after. Sure change. Yeah. <laughs> the thing I observed Which yeah. are opposing each other. Under right. Okay. Okay, so that's the U bit. You can see the bottom U bit here. And at the top, they've both got their heads like that. Right. Opposite each other. Uh, right. Yeah. Opposing snakes as a kind of dedication to what's going right. to happen. <laughs> yeah, right. So they're well, the two right. snakes, the two rivers. Right, two possibly. energies. All yeah. you yeah. need to go in, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, it seems quite obvious that the access to this monument wasn't open to everybody. Mm -hmm. Must have been. And the door? Yeah. yeah. Certain level. And the engravings start on this side. Yes, I know, just as soon as I start. And then they continue there. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're much more thorough in a way than many of the monuments, more familiar monuments. Mm. It's like a more of a complete system, is a very Exactly. And they go the sun and the moon. See. Right, right. Yeah. And this is the only stone which is different. Of course. Right. With snakes and, and then afterwards you have higher structure. Replica, isn't the original? They've taken the original stone out 
Because so these they are go down under. You see. So what do ah. the X's mean? Death. Is that right, Henry? Yeah. yeah. But then it's death and resurrection. And on the other uh, side, there are V shapes, which are the Egyptian sign of opening and resurrection. You yeah. see. And this is all done on the Newgrange piece. Mm -hmm. And this chamber, the cover stone here, um, is part of the same stone which covers the Loch Mariaquer dolmen, which we'll see this afternoon. It's four kilometers away. So where did they come in? Who? Oh. Well, I don't know really, but they came in from the top, maybe they never got in this far. Right. See what I mean? They were looking for something. Because there was a sort of chamber, there's a sort of chamber above this. Oh. Maybe they found stuff in there, or did they get inside here? I mean, it's impossible to tell, because nobody knew this was here historically until the middle of the 19th mm -hmm. century. So is there anything on the other side of these? Some of the stones have got engravings on the other sides, yeah. So and this you, one in particular. How do you know that it has engravings on the Because they took this place apart. They've taken this monument apart. Right, okay. And um, rebuilt it in 1986. And when they did that, that's what they discovered that on the other side of this stone is an engraving, which is a continuity of the engraving at La Table des Marchands at Loc Mariaquer, where we're going this afternoon. Um, so it shows that these two cover stones are from the same stone. Mm, okay. Now there was a third bit of that stone which is on another dolmen, which I'll show you. Which means that originally there was one stone, was divided it was into divided into three and used to build three monuments. So this is one, and there's one we're going to see this um, afternoon, and the third one... It would we'll see the third one this afternoon as well, it's on the same stone. Oh, God. Okay. But one of them, the one in Loch Mariaquer, the writing or the, the, the design is turned downwards to the earth. Mm. Here, it's turned upwards to the sky. Very downwards. Which shows them, it's a, an indication of the different meaning of these two monuments, this one and the other one we'll see. This one is more, um, do you say sacerdotal in, in English? Does that exist? Mm -hmm. Not familiar with it. No. <laughs> well, it's a good word. It's a good word. It's more linked to a priestly function. Priestly function or, or, or in, inside shows, whereas the other side is more linked to science. Let's put it that way. Um, outside science or laws. Let's see the sun and the moon right. sort of marry in this chamber. If you follow the lines, they join from one stone to another and they meet up here. This is the stone which is lit up by the sun. And there's something special happens in the junction between the two here. And there's some kind of union. <laughs> right, exactly. Right, well, we'll come to that again, yeah. Because the standing stone is the male phallic representation. And this kind of monument is the, the female womb. So then, what time of year does is there? What time of year here does the intersection occur on that stone? The intersection never. Well, I don't know if it yeah. ever never occurs, but the, the 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 sun comes in on winter solstice and comes down here to meet the stone. Now that's what's interesting is because it's the diagonal, because the sun comes in on the diagonal. Mm. The day before solstice the sun doesn't get into the chamber. You see, there's only one day. Right. If the main axis had been winter solstice, then the day before, the sun would have come into the chamber on an angle. I see. Whereas as it's the diagonal, which is winter solstice, there's only that day mm. that the sun actually just gets past and comes right into this chamber. Mm -hmm. What was the rationale for uh, taking this thing completely apart? Why did they do that? Yeah. Um, we brought out our first study, I'll show you that this afternoon, on this monument in 1977, I think. And it was shortly after that, two or three years, 1981 they started it. Um, 
I don't, well, why did they do that? What's clear is that since they've done it, since they took it apart and rebuilt it, you now get water coming in. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't been able to rebuild it as it way. was. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and the height of this chamber has changed. This was higher. It's very yeah. well structured stone and, and seems clearly divided into three levels in the middle and four on the sides here. Yeah. One, two, three, four of these concentric circle shapes on either side and three in the middle. And if you look at this, you've got one here with two bits above here. So there's a three aspect to this lower part. Then there's a this central part which has this sort of little we call this the goddess bump. Yeah. Right? Above it, and which gives rise to another form above it, like this. Now we found um a twelfth century um uh, engraving which has exactly the same structure, 12th century Christian engraving, which has exactly the same structure. Uh, I'll show you a picture of it, where you have just saints here, right, with yes. flowers. <laughs> yes. But the structure is identical. Yeah. And it's called, the, the, the 12th century structure is called, uh, engraving is called the Tree of Jesse. Mm. Oh. So <clears throat> we call this one the Tree of Jesse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so beautiful, so beautiful. This is a bit like some of the canons of Indian <coughs> art where you divide it into these proportions and into these different squares and regions mm -hmm. and they appear to be so established, so universal. Well, they obviously represent some kind of energetic achievement. Mm -hmm. you, uh, this, this shows some kind of energetic achievement. If you look at the earlier stones, you see they're more sort of structuring themselves. <laughs> it, as you come in, they get more and more structured. Um, yeah. And from here on in, you're then coming into the chamber yeah. after the quartz stone. Anyway, but, but here the these other people come down. To no, it's about a moment. Sorry. Oh, 
which has led them. where the nice tempers went in. So that's the tip of the horn there, is it? That's it. Then follow round. Be careful on... Right, you got that. Okay, reach the head. Uh, hang on a second. These are the, <laughs> the feet. <laughs> and that's the head. Oh. And it starts the horns. Oh God. Il y a deux cu des cupules aussi qui sont pas représentées sur le sur les dessins. So here like this and then up here. And then you've got a kind of very sharp axe head like that. And it comes down here. In fact, it's what is called the ash charu the 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 axe plow, right? Um We've called this a balance. We think it's a, it's some kind of balance that it it shows a balance between vertical and horizontal. Okay. I don't know if you can see that clearly. Yes. So we're above the chamber here now. See.